Hello, drummers and other creatures. It's sweltering hot in London today, and I kind of have to get this done pretty quickly, or I might faint. Uh, a viewer, it's not the right word, a viewer recently asked me to cover um, Testify by Stevie Ray Vaughan, a beautiful groove by the wonderful Chris Layton. And uh, I thought, what a great suggestion. Thank you. Keep the suggestions coming. It, it's very good. It sounds a little bit like this. Uh, I'll play a little demo and then I'll do my best to explain how it works and how you can learn it. Let's go. <laughs> go. Now as with all things there's more than one way to go about learning it but I thought a really good way to approach this would be to focus on what the hands are doing first and then look at how we add the feet just so that we can uh, spend a little bit of time observing learning and being aware of the the movements of our snare drum stroke to create the the dynamics the the balance between the softer and louder notes or the ghost notes and the accented notes if you wish. So let's have a look. We're going to sort of break this down and go beat by beat. This is an eighth note pattern. So we're counting one and two and three and four and, and I'm gonna show you what, what sounds to me like the, the main pattern that Chris Layton is playing. Obviously, as with all of these sorts of things, music not made by computers anyway, there's quite a lot of variation in, in what he plays, but I think this represents the uh, sort of essence of the thing. Um, you're always welcome to start some sort of internet argument about that if you like. It gets the views. Now, let's see what we're doing. We're going to start, we're just going to look at the one and, and we're going to think in terms of the movements I need to make to produce the right sort of dynamics to make the soft and loud notes happen. So the first thing we're going to do is one and where one is a ride stroke and the and is a snare stroke, but it's a ghost note, and it's a ghost note that's preparing me to play a louder accented note. So I'm going to play an upstroke there. I start with my hand down here. I'm going to kiss the snare on the way up on the, the, the one and, like this, one and. So as I raise my hand up, that's where I'm going to allow the stick to play a soft note on the snare. And hopefully the hi-hat's not in the way. I hope more, you'll, you'll get the idea anyway. one and. Now the two and, I've got a ride and a snare again. My right, blah, left hand is up, it's ready to play a loud note. And I'm gonna play on the and of two, a loud note, and I'm gonna let it bounce back. That's called a full stroke, and that prepares me for yet another loud note that's going to, to follow, okay? So the two and, my stick is there, two and. That one, no, wrong way around, silly man. Two on the ride and the snare, right? Two and, and I'm letting the stick bounce. Two and, two and. So here's, the snare's resonating with my voice. That's not clever, is it? Anyway. That's the two and, simple enough. Now three and, I've just got two ride strokes. That's easy enough. Three and. The four is interesting. We're gonna play down on the four. You know, my left hand is from the three and has bounced as a full stroke, sorry, from the two and has bounced as a full stroke. I'm gonna play down into the snare and then I'm gonna follow up with a soft note um, and I'm gonna play the ride on the and of the four, okay? Now, don't worry, try and follow this. There will be uh, written information provided and I'm gonna put this together in a minute 
and it'll sort of start to make a bit more sense. So I just want you to understand each one of these components on their own. Okay, so we've got... And the, the, the snare drum is going down and then tap very softly, okay? So let's recap, if I can remember what I'm doing. One and. Two and. Three and. And then four and. Now, I'm going to put that together in sequence without stopping and at the end I'm going to stop at the end of the full bar and sometimes you feel like oh I just want to get on with it why are you doing this so slowly but we're looking at a, a way that we can very gently learn how to play the sequence of events at the same time programming our hands to do something sort of intelligently if you like if you can say that about something drum related and we're just really thinking about flow more than anything. And if you get the flow right, you can speed it up and then you'll get something that feels really good. Watch Chris Layton play. The man is relaxed and loose. Even when he's playing something full on. He's like a sort of jellyfish of drumming. Beautiful. Okay, let's put the whole sequence together. I've got to stop talking so much. Oh, I hate doing things this slowly. No, I don't. No, it's very good. It's good. Do things slowly. Is that enough demonstrating? You see, it took me a little while to warm up into that, right? Um, 
I don't know, would it have been better if I looked more slick? No, I'm practicing this thing, right? So, cool, this, this is what's going to happen for you. It'll take you a little while. You're going up, full, down tap. That's the sequence of events your left hand is going to do. Shall I run that again, just to give you another view of it? Let's see how that goes. Maybe that really helps you, you dig in to the process. We don't want to make the video too long. Maybe if I don't talk too much, I end up demonstrating too much. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay, not bad, got a bit of a flow. And so work that up to the point that you're letting that flow. Don't think about the tempo of the song. You're looking for just a nice, comfortable flow, one and two and three and four, and developing the sense that you can be very aware and conscious of the movements of your left hand and, and how the, the point of those movements is to provide you with the dynamic variation, right? You're, you're doing this exercise, but not just because someone told you to do it, but because it, it yields a very particular result that's positive for the way your drumming sounds. Um, and so you're focusing on that, and when you've learned how to focus on that and appreciate when that's working really well, also try and bring your attention to the ride, that the ride isn't really variable. You know, and when you're playing, you do want a bit of human variation in it. We're not trying to play something robotic, but we want the dynamics of the ride to be the same for every stroke as, uh, of the ride, where with the snare we've got a definite soft note, ghost note, and, and a loud note, an accent. Okay, does that make sense? Mm, pardon me. Now, let's add the bass drum in. The bass is on the one, on the two, and the three in the and. So you get one, two, three, and. Remember that's what I'm considering the main groove. There is quite a bit of bass variation, but, but give or take, this is the main theme that I'm hearing. That if you look up on um, YouTube, there is a version of just the drums that you can listen to. And I, I admit, I did listen to that, and maybe it spoils things a little bit. But um, anyway, one, two, three, and. And it has a little stoppy, starty feeling because you've got the three and, and there's a little bit of a gap in the bass. So there's a, there's a sort of sense that the group goes, ah, mm. it's like breathing out and in or in and out. The way I'm going to approach this, more ways than one, but this is how I'm approaching it now, is that I'm going to play the hand pattern at a relaxed pace and when I feel that it's going all right, I'm gonna play the bass drum on the one. And as I'm getting into that, just feeling comfortable and relaxed with the bass drum on the one, I'm just starting to think about, ooh, I'm gonna add the bass on the two afterwards. And when I feel ready, I'm gonna have a try. And hopefully I get this right straight out because I'm so clever and I'm a teacher and all of that and I have to get everything right first time. But when you're practicing this, you may or may not get it right, and that's not a problem. Remember that getting things right is not the essence of learning. The essence of learning actually is learning how to be aware of whether or not you got things right or wrong. Uh, so I'm gonna play the bass on the one. When I feel comfortable, I'm then gonna add the bass on the two as well. So in both cases, that coincides with my ride symbol. And then finally, I'm going to add the bass on the three and the and, which also coincides with the ride cymbal pattern. So I've got the three and like so. Okay, without further ado, let's get the hand pattern going. And then I'm going to walk myself through the three uh, stages of the bass. Bass on the one, get comfortable. Bass on the two, get comfortable. Bass on the three and three and. Here we go.
and so on. It can be very annoying trying to break something down slowly that you already know how to play. <laughs> it's... Anyway, I'm not here to impress anyone. So you get the idea, right? Once you get that going comfortably, you can then start to sort of relax. You, you notice that I'm sort of being very demonstrative about the upstrokes and downstrokes and so on. Um, once you know that that's more or less automated and programmed in, I would keep it at a slow tempo, but tr try to just stop thinking about all of that stuff and, and try and listen to the overall sound that you want to get. So be aware of where you want the snare to be louder and softer, but um, you want to sort of work to the point that you're not really thinking upstroke, downstroke and all that nonsense. The idea is to go past that. Finally, see if you can play it a little bit faster. If you're a glutton for punishment, hi-hat on the two and four, something I quite like doing whenever I can. And that gives you the essence, at least, of the groove for Chris Layton's beautiful groove. I just said groove twice, that's not good, is it? That gives you the essence of Chris Layton's beautiful groove on Testify by Stevie Ray Vaughan. I hope that methodology made sense and was easy to follow. I hope I didn't talk too much this time, trying to get the balance right. Um, as I said, in the description box below, I'll put a link to a written out um, just a notation for this, this bar of groove. And uh, you know, the main thing is have a go at learning it let me know how it goes for you. Did you learn how to play it? Did you get it up to the speed of the song? Would you like me to do a follow-up and uh, give a little bit of perspective on what you might do by way of some fills and variations? Or are you happy enough to work that out? Just get to the point that you can jam on this and see what happens. And there we go. Meanwhile, I'll be back with another video very soon if I haven't died of heat stroke. Please make sure that if you enjoyed this, which I'm sure you did, thumbs up, please, like, subscribe, hit the bell thingy, and uh, don't forget that I'm a real life drumming teacher. And if you feel that you need some help with your drumming, you may benefit from some one-on-one -on -one lessons with me. Get in touch if you're interested. Now I think it's time you can go off and practice. <laughs>